And here we are with the Xperia 1 Mark IV. And I'm glad that it's finally here. For those of you who've been following the channel know that it took quite a while to get here. So packaging here, I, I was really surprised when I took this out of, they sent it in a bubble wrap envelope, which I'm really not cool with, with this expensive of a phone. But I was like, did I get scanned before I even opened it? Cause it was so light. Nothing in here basically, but the phone tells you some of the stuff on the back, IP68, Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, 5,000 milliamp battery, 4K OLED display, 12 megapixel camera on the front, which is an upgrade from the 8, and then all the stuff with the new camera setup on the back, the 12-12-12 and 3D time of flight sensor. So let's go ahead and take this out of the box. Use the handy dandy unboxing tool here to cut the plastic wrap. Nothing too crazy here. Of course, as we've discussed before, there is no charging brick in here and not even a charging cable. Oh, looks like we need this again. There we go. And let's see what we get in the box. Maybe. There we go. <laughs> and not a whole lot. We get a phone. This is the most pitiful unboxing video in the history of mankind because there's absolutely nothing in here except the phone. I really wanted a different color, but if y'all have also been following what I did, I bought this on Amazon. This isn't even out yet. Apparently I, I was educated later. It has been launched, I guess, in maybe like Singapore and China, not in the United States, not in the UK. I believe the, the 16th or the 18th of June this month is when it's supposed to come out internationally and then not till September 1st here in the States. So this is way in advance for me. Solid looking phone. You can definitely tell there's some changes on the back. How do we know that? Well, because I have this guy right here. So big changes on the back that we have here. We have a new lens for the telescopic lens. What it is, it's a continuous optical zoom that if they call it like a variable zoom, continuous optical zoom. It goes between different millimeters. So it goes between 85 millimeters and 125 millimeters. And it's supposed to be pretty cool for taking some optical photos. Very, very similar looking to the Xperia 1 Mark III. Still got the headphone jack up top. And yeah, not, not a whole lot of difference here. When you put them side by side, we can see here that the SD card, SIM card slot has been moved. You still got the antenna bands over here. Maybe maybe it weighs a little bit more. I would have to look and see what the, what the grams are on it. The SIM card tray has been relocated down to the bottom. Still the USB-C port down there and pretty much unchanged over here. Now we do have one less button over here on the left hand side. So all we have now is just the shutter button, the power button, which also doubles as a fingerprint sensor, which I actually really like. And then you get the volume button. So nothing too crazy there. It does feel a little bit sharper around the edges. And somebody else had mentioned that to me before. It's more rounded off on the Xperia 1 Mark III, right around this area. So when you grab the Xperia 1 Mark IV, you can definitely feel it much more of a kind of a harsh ridge right there with the lines on the back of the phone. But this will be going in a case. Definitely it does feel more, you can feel it more in the hand. Like This one, the Xperia 1 Mark III has a more rounded approach to it. So that is something that I've noticed here just taking it out of the box. So let's go ahead and fire it up. One nice thing is, is the screen dimensions are exactly the same. So I'll still be able to use the spare screen protector I have for this one to put on this one, which is nice. I also have a case for it. It's another caseology that I ordered. I believe it's the vault and I picked it up. I'll do a review on that later. Fancy looking phone. All right, and this is it. This is all that's in the box other than the actual phone. And it's just a little insert that tells you basically how to power it on and where your SIM card and your SD card goes. Not, not a whole lot there. So that's kind of interesting and voila. So I have to get to the setup here. Again, some other major stuff that they changed. We have the new 12 megapixel selfie camera that we get on the front as opposed to the eight on the last one. It's supposed to be significantly improved. I'm very, very excited about that for sure. And has a bigger battery. Also has a Snapdragon 8 generation one. Storage and memory is pretty much the same. I have the 12 gigabyte of RAM 256 model. And yeah, so that's about it for here. We'll talk more about the phone after I have some time to set it up and play with it. But that's the unboxing for the Xperia 1 Mark IV. And here I have the Sony Xperia 1 
Mark IV. Now, this one, you're probably wondering how I got it if you're not a follower on my channel. I got it off Amazon. You can get it for sale. And I was corrected by some people after initially saying that, you know, I was curious about what the legitimacy of was this phone, picking it up on the internet when you couldn't get it for sale yet. Because the launch isn't until later in June in the UK and in Europe, and not till the 1st of September here in the US, in the US. but apparently in Asia, it's already been launched, or at least in some countries anyway. So this model I have, it's working fine, Snapdragon 8 Generation 1, all the same hardware, everything, it's just a different model series. However, I'm not getting 5G with T-Mobile. So I've got my Xperia 1 Mark III right here, and it actually works perfectly fine, 5G on T-Mobile, no 5G on AT&T. When we get the actual US model, it should work with 5G in the US, at least with T-Mobile and maybe even Verizon. Don't quote me on that, but probably definitely not with AT&T, just assuming. So the phone itself, fundamentally not a whole lot difference when you look at the Xperia 1 Mark IV versus the Xperia 1 Mark III. At face value, they mostly look the same, but you've got a different camera on here with the variable aperture for the telephoto, which is kind of neat. And you also have a bigger battery and a couple other different things with the phone, uh, like the new selfie camera that's better and some refinements with the apps. And they've made some changes. So they've already announced it's going to be $15.99 in the US, which is just crazy. I don't think this phone should cost that much, but... Well, that's me. I try to make sense out of things and I try to make reasonable assumptions about prices and hardware. It's just not a $1,600 phone, but then it's not a mainstream phone either. This is not a phone that most people are going to be like, hey, I want the Sony Xperia 1 Mark IV, which I mean, I actually love it. I like this phone a lot. I love my Xperia 1 Mark III. Changed my impressions completely about the Sony phones. So yeah, I'm definitely team Sony when it comes to phones now. I love the 4K, I love the big 6.5 inch screen, I love the cinematic style aspect ratio, they got a brighter screen now, so it's supposed to be, I think they said about 50% brighter, and I believe it's about 1000 nits if I remember correctly, but yeah, it's been a real gem, I like it, <laughs> I think it's a cool phone, I paid $12.99 for it on Amazon, if you pre-order it right now, you can get a pair of the XM4 earbuds, which are actually pretty good earbuds, they say it's a $300 value, I... I don't really think any earbud should cost $300, but that's just me. You can get some very good ones for 70 to 150 bucks. So there are a lot of options out there. If you're curious, go check out my buddy El Jefe reviews because he's the king of basically audio, as far as I'm concerned, on YouTube. And he makes some great stuff. And actually, he just hit 80,000 subscribers today or yesterday now. So I was pretty excited about that for him as well. Good friend of mine. So check him out if you want an alternative or some options on headphones or earbuds. But yeah. The $12.99 price tag, I was okay with that because it's not a mainstream phone. It's not like Samsung where you can buy it from Samsung. You can get, you can trade in your previous year phone. Like right now, there's not a plug, but if you go to Samsung, you can trade in your S21 Ultra for a thousand bucks. Most people didn't even pay that much. You probably got a good trade-in deal on it before. Towards the S22 Ultra, that's a pretty good, pretty darn good deal because it's an $11.99 phone. S22 Ultra, fantastic phone. That's something I would re recommend to almost anybody over this phone because it does most stuff better. But I like this phone. And I like what it brings to the table. I like the dedicated shutter button. I like the Sony camera. I like the variable aperture on the telephoto. I'm really looking forward to testing out the cameras here. And it's a different experience. And I love the 4K screen. Yes, I know some people are gonna be snobs about the pixels, the PPI, and you're like, well, you can't tell the difference. Well, I just like having a 4K screen. Let me enjoy it, okay? <laughs> if you want a 4K screen, go out and get it. I love the haptic vibration with the sound experience. It's like a cinematic experience. Like when you go watch the um, on the Dolby screen at AMC. I've been watching the videos there because you get the vibration in the chairs to go along with the experience. Watching Top Gun Maverick on that was completely unreal versus watching it even in the regular IMAX or the regular theater, I saw it a second time afterward. Very disappointing experience. I've been ruined by the Dolby screen that they have at AMC. So having that kind of same feature in here, I really like it, especially when consuming content, watching videos, watching movies. I watched Top Gun on this and it was amazing. <laughs> so there's a lot of stuff that this phone brings to the table in the multimedia department and the entertainment department and in the pro camera department. So I will tell you right now, this is not a good point and shoot camera. I was taking some pictures of the flowers on my table in my kitchen and I was not that impressed. It needs more light. Like this, this sensor needs some more light, but the cameras are not geared towards that. Sony tries to make this phone do everything brute force strength with the actual lenses as opposed to doing computational photography where I argue they should really 
kind of blend that together. If they could maybe do a 50-50 in each department, that would make people a lot happier and give you kind of a pro experience that you could really, really drive home and make some spectacular photos and video, but at the same point in time, pull it out, hit the shutter button, and you get a good photo, and you just don't get that all the time. And if you do, it's not as good as a Pixel, it's not as good as the iPhone, it's not as good as the Samsung phone, at least from my experience. So there are reasons to get this phone whenever it comes out. I definitely wouldn't recommend buying it now because you're probably going to have some signal compatibilities in your area. And also, I've been using this Caseology Vault case, and I'll do a review about it later, dedicated video, but I like it a lot, $13.99 case. I really like what they're doing over at Caseology. I've got the Caseology Nano Pop with my Xperia 1 Mark III, totally love it. This one kind of gives you a little bit more texture to it. Totally great case for 14 bucks. So link in the description for that if you want to buy one. You probably don't have the phone right now, but if you're watching this three months down the road, this could be helpful for you, who knows? So overall, the fundamental experience, not a lot different than the Xperia 1 Mark III. So if you don't really want these crazy different camera stuff, the biggest thing I would really argue for here is the upgraded selfie camera, which definitely is noticeably better. It is a noticeably better camera. It's a new one. It's 12 megapixel, not the old eight. But if you don't care about that and you don't care about the variable aperture on the telephoto and the slightly bigger battery and the slightly brighter screen, you could get an Xperia 1 Mark III and probably get a pretty darn good deal on it and save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So that might be a good option if you want to get in the Sony phone and you want to have an enjoyable Sony experience because I had head over heels, the Xperia 1 Mark III. I really like it, other than the rinky-dink selfie camera. It's really a turnoff for me. But hey, if you can get over that, solid phone. Now, and also for manual photography. If you want to do manual photography, if you want to do manual photography with the phone, this is it. Like this is the apex of it. And I know that Samsung, they've got their pro mode and you can do some stuff there too. But this one, it's basically like using a Sony Alpha camera experience with all the stuff you can change. It's really unreal. It's beyond my pay grade. I am not that big of an expert with the camera. I'm trying to learn. And this is a great phone to do that with. So the Xperia 1 Mark IV, I think is probably going to be a good phone to get. I would say probably don't buy it initially when it comes out. Wait a couple of months and wait for the price to drop because $15.99 is just too much. Now, if you just feel, if you got money to burn and you feel like this is the phone for you, totally, go buy it. YOLO. I mean, that's what I did. And I'm not going to sit here and call myself an idiot for doing it because I'm in a position to do it. It's good for the channel. And so I can make videos for you fine people who want to learn about it. But out street value, I, I would wait. I just would because the phone's not going anywhere and it's a good phone. I think it is. And also there've been people that have said like watching Mr. Mobile's video, he got it. And even some other guys saying it was pre-production software. And especially when it came to the camera, they're expecting more stuff, uh, more refinements. So I'm hoping that as it gets closer to the official launch, that there's going to be some updates for the camera. I'll come back and address you on that. I am going to make an actual camera sample review video as I have some time over the next week or two. I'm going to do my, it's kind of hard to do a full review. I am to do a review type video on it, and we'll talk about that. But I like the phone. I like the bigger battery. It is noticeable. That extra 400 milliamps does make a difference. The brightness on the screen, it is notice noticeably brighter, especially when you're outside. So I appreciate that as well. And the haptic feedback has changed. Very, very intense. Like very robust, intense haptic feedback now when you're typing. And it kind of like almost makes your fingers bounce off the screen. It's it's a lot. Uh, it feels kind of like the Pixel 6 Pro on steroids whenever it comes to the haptic feedback. So I was already quite happy with the haptic feedback on the Xperia 1 Mark III. This one's actually a little too much. <laughs> and if you're hearing me say that haptic feedback is a little too much, then it would probably be off-putting for some people. It was very surprising how the intensity of the haptic feedback. And I'm going to see about turning that down some. But uh, so far, I like it. $12.99, I mean... Yeah, it's an expensive phone. If any way you look at it, it's an expensive phone. You're not going to get the trade-in deal stuff like you do with other phones like Samsungs and iPhones and everything else under the sun. But hey, it's here. And well, it's kind of here anyway. Again, I got mine. This is, I guess, the Asian market model. And I'm sure the UK, Europe model is going to be a little bit better, more refined, hopefully some better expanded 5G support. And I'll have to see what I'm going to do because I kind of would like one that works 5G in my area, but I know I'm not going to hold on to it for more than a year. 4G LTE is working actually really, really well for me, so I'm not having a lot of problems there. So no big concerns, but yeah, it would be nice to have a 5G model. So definitely, 
I would say don't try and buy one of these right now unless you just know those kind of caveats going into it. But that's my kind of initial impressions and stuff on the Xperia 1 Mark IV. I've had it, been using it for about a day now. The fingerprint sensor is still over here, still fine, still built in with the power button. I do like that. And I just haven't had a lot of time with it yet. Of course, you've got the headphone jack as well, which makes some people happy. And of course, you can pull the SIM tray out with your finger down here, dual SIM, and also you can put an SD card if you want one of those. Um, you have to do one or the other, like one SIM and one SD card. You can't do two SIMs and an SD card because there's not enough space for it. But it's a very thoughtful phone for creators and people who really care about doing phone camera stuff. Uh, it really kind of takes things to the next level in a hardware capacity, not so much in the automatic point and shoot capacity, which is where everybody else has been going lately for the last couple of years, like these guys with the Google Pixel. So yeah, that's all I got. I'm going to wrap this one up. If you have any questions or comments, then please go to the comment section. I will get back with you. I'm going to be covering this for a while. I'm going to make the Sony phone kind of one of the tenets of the channel. I do like the, the Sony. I like the Samsung. I like the Pixel phones. There's quite a few phones that I do like that I tend to cover a little bit more than others. It might be kind of a one or two off type of video. So we'll be more continuous content on this. And that's it. So that's all I got. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and the subscribe button. And the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. I'll see you guys next time.